Davis has criticized the government's response to COVID-19. Anders Segnall says too many died too soon and Sweden should have done more. Unlike other countries in Europe, Sweden didn't impose a strict lockdown and kept many businesses open in the first weeks of the crisis. Instead, citizens were left to practice social distancing on a voluntary basis. At least 38,589 infections have been reported, and there have been nearly 4,500 deaths. An official inquiry is expected to be launched. Prime Minister Stefan Ruffin says the government will appoint a commission before the summer. Paul Rees is life first in the Swedish city of Malmö. Um, this is really quite a U-turn. What's been the reaction to this? Yes, Rob, it really does look like a, a big U-turn on, on first glance. Just for a bit of context, Anders Tenjell, the uh, state epidemiologist, is a huge celebrity now in Sweden, much more of a celebrity than any civil servant could really expect to be. Uh, it's his word people hang on on the daily com uh, press conferences around COVID-19 about the situation in Sweden. And in fact, it's his agency, the public health agency, that the government actually defers to in making decisions on Sweden's approach to COVID-19. So it's actually him who's made the decisions. Um, so what he appeared to be saying in his interview on Tuesday with Swedish Radio was that the approach hadn't worked and that they should have done things differently. Now, that caused a lot of surprise in Sweden because every day uh, he's been saying the same line, that this is our approach, we're sticking by it, we think this is best. So hearing something different from that caused a lot of surprise and in the rest of the world as well. So much so that the Swedish newspapers today are carrying English versions of the story in which he says, well, wait a minute, I didn't really mean our strategy was incorrect. All I really meant was that we could have done things better. I've been saying the whole time that um, in hindsight, we would look at our approach and see what we could have done better. And what he does think could have been done better in Sweden is to protect people in old people's homes, which have been absolutely devastated by this virus. So there is a recognition that the health agency and Anders Tenjell could have improved the strategy in hindsight, but they're definitely holding off now from saying our approach was wrong. Well, is there any indication that the pro procedure that Sweden is going through at the moment is likely to change? I mean, what is the latest on the situation in Sweden? There doesn't seem to be much indication that it's going to change. And I think people like Tenyel would say that is, in a way, the beauty of their approach. While other people are coming out of lockdown, wondering what's going to happen, wondering if cases are going to spike. Uh, Tenyel said on Tuesday as well that Sweden has got over the curve and they don't have to change anything now. They hope that what they're doing will just mean the, the curve keeps going down. But the situation in Sweden really depends on what age you are and where you live. If you live in Stockholm, you've got a far, far greater chance than anywhere else in the country of being infected. And again, Tenyel and the state would say, well, maybe our approach has helped protect the rest of the country from the worst effects of the virus. But also, if you're, if you're over 70, of the 4,500 um, deaths in Sweden, about 4,000 of those are from people over 70, about half of them in old people's homes. So this is where Sweden and Tenyel really recognise that they've dropped the ball in this approach, and that's where they're saying they would have done things a lot differently from the start to protect these really vulnerable members of Swedish society. That's Paul Rees' life for us in Marmol. Paul, thanks very much indeed. I'm going to go ahead in the news hour. In